last two years doing really well. Um, there's a, there's a, we've learned a lot over the years, I suppose, through, through very tough defeats in, in all Ireland finals, and it, there's a, a calmness there, and there's a maturity there, and I think the, the, the fans, the, and there's a lot of them here, they're, they've, they've set, step, stepped back a little bit, Des, and they've allowed the players and the management to prepare for this game, and because of that and the fact that Donegal are raging hot favourites, it will give the likes of me confidence going into tomorrow's game. But Liam, talking to fans as I have been, I was talking to people below in Hollymount in Mayo today who crimed Crook Patrick for cystic fibrosis and they were saying they're so nervous about the game because of the fact that they have come up so many times and walked away from Crook Park with a broken heart. Yeah. Is it that the, the confidence could be there, should be there, is more there? Yeah, well, I, I feel that, um, and I, I don't want to be disrespectful to the Donegal fans, there's quite a lot of them here, and I don't want to <laughs> Good be, move. Yeah. be getting in trouble with the likes of the, the, the way yeah. Pat Spillane has got in trouble at times. But I just think it's a very, it's, for us, we, we played against a, an absolutely outstanding Curry team in 2004 and 2006. And, you know, if you, if you understand the game and understand, the, uh, have played the game and understand the preparation and how you match up against that team, would be very difficult to win. But I think this is a very much a level playing field. You know, two t teams, w young teams, very aggressive teams, defend very well on a completely level playing field. I don't think the Mio guys will have any mental baggage going mm. into this game. I think they'll be going into this game very confident. They'll be getting on that bus tomorrow, really believing they can win. I don't think that was the case maybe in 2004 and 2006. But well, you're one of the star players around. I see in the audience there near John O, uh, one of the great legends, uh, Willie Joe. Do you know the line? Do you know the line? Will Galway beat Mayo? <laughs> <laughs> Willie Joe Padden, you're welcome. Are you looking forward to tomorrow? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's a great occasion. And, you know, from the fact that, you know, Donegal and Mayo pairing is, you know, it's, uh, it's unique in one sense because normally you associate all Ireland's with the bigger counties, Cork, yeah. Kerry, Tyrone or Dublin. So, and there's a lot of similarities between the Mayo people and the Donegal people, you know, and we're very, we would be very friendly towards each other. Now, we mightn't be friendly from uh, yeah. 2 30 yeah. tomorrow until <laughs> 5 in the yeah. afternoon, but, um, <laughs> but after that, I think it's all forgotten. But I, I think it's a, it's a great occasion and, you know, let's hope it's going to be a very good game. Are you confident? I am quietly confident now. You'd have to say that Donegal has come through the, the tougher route to get here. They have beaten the big teams. We came pretty much under the radar to here, but we have Dublin, done... Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, as to, yeah, well, prob yeah, now, you know, Dublin were, were, were fancy to beat us, but, you know, on the day, we, you know, we, we actually, you know, played very well. The team starts to grow from there because, you know, they, they were beginning to take the little bigger scalps with them. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, tomorrow, as, as Liam said there, you know, Donegal are favourites. Mayo are going in in a nice situation, you know, they, all they have to do is get out there, stick with their game plan, you know, Donegal, we know how Donegal play, but we can't, there's no point of us, um, you know, forsaking our own game uh, for the way they play, we just have to go out there with our own plan and play the game, and if we do, I think we can do very well. It's, you know, I can sense the point you make, and, and John made it earlier, that the, the similarities between the counties, that, mm. and even the, the, the audience, it's such an unusual uh, find. There's such a goodwill towards you all, but it, and it's, it's going to be disappointment for somebody again, which is a shame, because I think nationally nobody cares. Can I bring up a photograph? <laughs> Let's move on to something. <laughs> <laughs> Brian McIniff and Martin Gronje yeah. were a part of an historic uh, Donegal team that won their first ever Ulster title back in 72 and 74. Isn't that right, Brian? Correct. Fantastic, fantastic time for Donegal, as uh, we heard earlier from Matt. Well, I, I suppose, uh, reflecting back in 72, we'd never won an Ulster championship until then, and yeah. uh, the man here to my right here, I used to call him Mophead. Mophead, he he's in a photograph yes. there now, on the front you left. There, you see him front left there. there the yeah. You can understand why there I call him Mophead. <laughs> Was there no barber in Ballyshannon, Martin? <laughs> who's, besi who's beside you there? Uh, um, I can't make it out. I better put on my glasses. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't make it, yeah. <laughs> who's there, lads? Who? Donald Monaghan, no, is this somebody who did have access Mac to his scissors? Mike Gallagher, is it? No, no, no. no, no. no. John, John Boyce. John, John Boyce, Boyce. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think he, that was. He had a barber. Yeah, was he had a barber. No, I mean, yeah. when you look back on it, I mean, you know, it's embarrassing to look back on that no, era. You were cool, Martin. <laughs> it was cool. No, well, Matt it was supposed to be cool, but it's so ridiculous now when you look at it. <laughs> and my children just recoil in horror <laughs> when I show them these photographs and when they see them, you know. Yeah. But look, it was a time we were in it, and, um, you know, barbers certainly were, <laughs> I think, going on lean times, to be honest about it, but Certainly you didn't trouble them all yeah. that much. For yeah. sure I didn't, for a long time. But it, it, was, it was breaking the mould though for Donegal too, Brian, wasn't it? It was this big 
then days as, as, as the All Ireland. It was in '92 for us because we had never won an Ulster Championship. In fact, we hadn't been to an Ulster final until 1963. So we'd never won two Ulster Championships back to back until 1963, and we never won the three back to back until '72. It was a great occasion for Donegal at the time. But when you talk about the great occasions, Grony, that clip we were looking at, Liam, when uh, when Donegal won in '92, and Mayo, I've no doubt, would be the same. The Donegal team reached the diamond in Donegal Town at half two, two in the morning. morning. And 15,000 people waiting for them. It was incredible. Children yeah. on shoulders, ha yeah. fast asleep. Yeah, yeah but even amazing. when Mayo lost it, for example, in 1989, do you remember there was yeah. about 15,000 people in knock waiting for the, uh, uh, the plane right. to land there? It was quite extraordinary. <laughs> and I think the celebrating went on in Christmas and this, with, uh, yeah. you know, when you didn't win one. So yeah. God help us tomorrow evening if Mayo win it. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you something, <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> And that's probably what makes it special, Liam, isn't it? And you know that it means so much to yeah. so many people, and it's probably what makes the GA unique. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely fantastic, and both counties are going to celebrate this. Whoever wins, and I just remember in '92 we were beaten in the semi-finals by Brian's team, and um, uh, people said Liam that was a shocking semi-final. Now, in fairness, it was it was a very poor uh, semi-finals, and Brian and, and the Donegal fans can thank us for them winning that all Ireland <laughs> final because I think we dragged them down to a level that, that, that day. Because Dublin, yeah. They, yeah, Dublin were very complacent. Dublin were at that game, Brian, in 92. And you, you guys, Donegal only played well for the last 10 minutes when Porrick Brogan came on. So they didn't really show their full <laughs> repertoire in that game. Uh, and yeah. it went, it went, Fair play. It, it, it would only be well a Mayo man who could turn something around <laughs> like that. But well Des, we went, to, uh, we went up for the um, goal challenge on the Wednesday night after they won. I have very fond memories. And... This gentleman was absolutely fantastic. And any time I'd go away for a game like that, I'd bring an entourage with me and I had about eight or ten guys with me. And I went over after the game, after the meal and stuff like that to thank Brian for the, for the invitation and congratulate them on their win. And he said, w like, where are you going? We're, you know, the Wednesday night after they won the All-Ireland. And he said to me, I said, we're going home now. We're taking off. And he said, no, you're not going home. Booked us into the hotel after the meal. Every, all expenses paid and made sure we had breakfast in the morning and set us off the next day. So that's the kind of character that Brian McIniff is and most Donegal people welcome us that day and they're still the same today. And would they get the same if they head down to Mayo on Monday night? <laughs> well, <they have. laughs> He's, he certainly will, that's for sure. Brian, I believe some of your grandchildren will be wearing green and red tomorrow. That's quite true. I have three gra Mayo grandchildren there and they're in the Mayo colours tomorrow. Yeah. But my daughter Joanne will be wearing the green and gold at Donegal. Absolutely. And is it a bit like John Casey's case where she's, she's trying to get the kids to say up Donegal and they keep saying? Uh, they're, they're gone beyond that stage now, Are they? I have to say. They're, they're quite adult in, in that respect. They're and, their and ways. They're very much me old people. And rightly so. <laughs> Liam, I probably should ask somebody else. I mean, one final Mayo loss was a draw. They drew with me the 96 and Liam got sent off in when yeah. that famous thing, anyone could have been sent off. Would, would Mayo have won that day if he wasn't sent off, in your view? Well, it's very hard to say. I, I certainly believe they would have won it because of the fact that he was the main man. He was the key player for Mayo. Yeah. And even, you know, that was an All-Ireland that should have been won, actually. It was an unlucky bounce of the ball, actually. Mm. You know, Colm Coy's long kick from about 70 yards. Like, there's a misjudgment in the full back line and with goalkeeper. It, ba it bounced on the ground. It ground. bounced on the, about the th uh, you know, about... 10 metres out from yeah. goals and bounced over the bar. And I think that got me the draw. Actually, it did, yeah. If it did, yeah. Me correct. Right, yeah. But that was, um, you know, the replay then, obviously, it wasn't it the replay the, the row was in yeah, and that kind of stuff, off, you know? Yeah. But I think even the following year, the Mayo had a great opportunity, Des. And I would nearly go back, as, like, that was in 97. I managed two Mayo teams in 94, 95 to All-Ireland Under-21 finals. And I always blame myself to an extent that had we won one of those, mm. and the players had the, shall we say, the experience of winning, winning. I feel in myself... 96 and 97, it would have stood to the senior team and maybe the whole aspect and the psychology of winning would have been, you know, in their DNA, so to speak, at the time. Do you think winning is a habit? I think winning is a habit. It's something that you acquire and once you have the taste of it, I believe myself, it's much easier then to actually go and win more. Liam, what is the difference with this team? I'm sure you know many of the lads who are lining out tomorrow. What, what do you feel could be the difference that'll, that'll, um, that'll make it on the day? I, I, I'm very confident because... Uh, they, they, see, they seem to be very, very, very focused. Um, there doesn't seem to be many really superstars no. on the team. No. You know, um, I think we played something like, uh, between blood injuries and stuff like that, we played 23 yeah. players in the semi-finals and it was seamless. 
all those type of things, you know, they're very, very low key. I, I haven't seen the Balanag guys all summer, the guys that live in Balanag. Yeah. I haven't seen them all summer. Jared Cafferkey, Ronan, Clarky, David Clark and go. I haven't seen them. They've been low keyed all year. They seem to have a real focus and, you know, they're playing as a team. And when you have that sort of power and that sort of energy, it gives you a great chance. Cool. All right, well, look at um, tomorrow. I wish you, I wish your health well. I can tell your back is <laughs> yeah. paining you. And I hope you, I hope you have a good day. And for an audience, I mean, we've had a lovely time tonight. You're a fabulous audience, and I hope you all get something out of tomorrow. It's terrible that not everyone's going to win it, but absolutely. Um, one of you at home will also have an amazing time in Croke Park tomorrow. Yes, indeed. And this is great to say it from one of the counties. Congratulations to Anne Garvin from Ballina oh, in County Mayo. <laughs> You've just won tickets to the big game, two nights in the four-star Co Park Hotel, €3,000 spending money, and, of course, the lift home and the limo as well. Enjoy it, Anne, and it's all thanks yeah. to Super Value. So enjoy it tomorrow if you're watching it in Mayo, in Dunny. My daughter went up to Donegal tonight to watch it with her Just to be there. It'll be more cracked, she says. But anyway, <laughs> um, if you're watching in Chicago, Australia, wherever, best of luck to you all. We're coming to a close in the programme. Best of luck to all four teams tomorrow, the minors as well, of course, and the officials. We're going to finish on a high, literally, aren't we? Yes, indeed. For everyone travelling up tomorrow morning, this is for you. Yeah. It's the High Kings with the Rocky Road to Dublin. Hey! From all of us here, Ihoa of his Berbo. In the merry month of June, from me home I started left the girls a tune. Nearly broke and had a saluted father dear. Kiss me dad and mother, drank a pint of beer. Me grief and tears was full enough to reap the corn. Beaver I was born, cut to stop my corn to banish. Most in covers a brand new pair of bros. Rattling all the bugs, breaking all the dogs. On the rocky road to double and one, two, three, four, five. Cut the hair and turn her down the rocky road. All the way to double and whack for lonely ride. So weary started by delight His spirits bright and airy tongue A drop of the pure Keep me hard from thinking That's the body's cure Whenever he's on for drinking To see the lassie smile Laughing all the while And me curious style To tell your heart To bum and ask to fly was hard Where does I require Till I was nearly tired On the rocky road To double and one, two, three, four, five Hut the hair and turn her down the rocky road All the way to double and whack For lonely ride And double and next to read I thought a village of peace will soon deprive of you of that My city will then and joke the stroll All the fun, the quality, fun, the little stroll All in the new localities up the cross me mind When I look behind, no one come could I find A part we sit, the one they choir up on the road Set me down and throw, wasn't much a go On the rocky road to double and one, two, three, four, five Hack the hair and turn her down the rocky road All the way to double and whack the lonely ride From here I got to be in this grass I feel a fear of landing on the cage Just as the ship was sailing, the captain at me roared Said the door of Maddy when they jumped aboard And having fun from high yeah. down I'm on the base There's a body race, dance and party Chase the water around me bubble And when the party head Wish me self was dead up in her fire and say On the rocky road to double and one, two, three, four, five Hut the hair and turn her down the rocky road All the way to double and whack the lonely ride And you call myself a fool I could no longer stand it But began to whine Temper I was losing Poor old Aaron's life They began abusing her I'll be so sincere Shillelagh I'd have fight So my words were nigh It's all I was So humble and with the louder in Giant in the affair We quickly cleared the way For the rocky road To double and one, two, three, four, five Up the hair and turn her down the rocky road All the way to double and whack for lolly rock Up the hair and turn her down the rocky road All the way to double and whack for lolly rock